Hello Grade 12s and a warm welcome to all of you. At the end of the year, you will be required to write an NSC or National Senior Certificate Examination for History. In order to prepare for this examination, it is important for you to know your work and therefore you have to study all the relevant content. However, it is equally important for you to know the skills that we teach you. Because although the examiner is testing your content knowledge, they are also testing your ability to extract, interpret, analyze, and argue. But don't stress because I will help you to revise these skills so that you are better prepared for your examination. In today's lesson, we're going to start with History Paper 1, and we're going to take a closer look at Question 1. Now, question one is a source-based section, which focuses on understanding the origins of the Cold War. And we are going to take a look at level three reliability questions and how you should go about to answer it. But remember, all of the skills that we will be revising today will also apply to all of the other topics that we cover in grade 12. Okay. So let's start off by briefly taking a look at all of the things that we are going to cover in today's lesson. Firstly, I'm going to give you a very brief outline of the origins of the Cold War and what content you should focus on when preparing for this section. Then, for the rest of the lesson, we're going to revise your source-based skills. Our focus today is going to be to take a look at how the examiners will ask level three reliability questions and how you should go about to answer these questions. Let's start with a brief outline of the origins of the Cold War. When you prepare for the section of work, it is important that you understand that the Cold War was an ideological war between two world powers of the time, America and the Soviet Union, capitalism versus communism. You must know how America and the Soviet Union both attempted to spread their influence in Europe after World War II. This includes things like the Iron Curtain, America's policy of containment, which consisted of the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plans, and the Soviet Communist Information Bureau, or Common Form, and the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance, or Comicon. You must also study the Berlin Crisis, the period between 1948 and 1961 in Berlin, with specific focus on the Berlin blockade and the Berlin Wall. Now remember, in accordance to the Grade 12 CAPS document and the examination guidelines, the examiner can focus on any of these aspects when they examine you in your NSC examination at the end of the year. So it is very important that you study all of this content in preparation for that examination. Now that we know the content that we must study, let's focus on the skills that we will be examined on. Remember, the examiner is not only going to test your content knowledge, they are also going to test the skills that we need in order to study history effectively. Today, the skill that we are going to focus on is level three reliability. Now in your NSC examination, the examiner will examine the skills that you will need as a historian to research history effectively. Remember, history is the study of past events. Historians, are the detectives of history, and it is their job to try to reconstruct the truth based on the available evidence. Their task is to collect or extract all the relevant evidence from various primary and secondary sources. They will then interpret this evidence. Once the evidence has been interpreted, they will evaluate its reliability in order to know whether or not it is a credible source of information. Then the historian will evaluate its usefulness as well as the limitations of the evidence in helping them understand the historical event. They will then corroborate the evidence with other sources by focusing on the similarities and differences. Once this is complete, they will use the information they have gathered to write an article, essay, thesis, or a book about the historical event. Now, all these skills 
will be examined in your NSC examination. Each skill will fall within a specific category of questioning. There are three categories. Level one questions will test your ability to extract evidence from various sources. Level two questions will test your ability to interpret evidence from various sources. And level three questions will test your ability to evaluate a source's reliability, usefulness, and limitations, as well as test your ability to compare similarities and differences from various sources. Okay, so let's take a look at level three reliability questions. These are questions to test your skill of evaluating whether or not a source is reliable to a historian. When you evaluate the reliability of a source, you must always look at the context in which the source was created. In other words, you will consider who created it, when was it created, and why was it created. Now, when can a source be considered reliable? It can be considered reliable if it was created during the time that is being researched. We call this a primary source. It can also be reliable if it was created by someone who experienced the period or event that is being researched. We call this a first-hand account. But a source can also be considered unreliable. This will happen when the author only gives his or her viewpoint. We call this type of source a biased source. And it can also be unreliable if it was used for propaganda purposes. Propaganda is when you manipulate the truth. Now, something that you must always remember when answering a level three reliability question is to always give a full explanation for the reason. Marks will not be awarded for simply saying primary source or first-hand account or biased or propaganda. You must always explain why you say so. Now, how do we know when a question you are reading is a level three reliability question. We need to look out for the following words. To what extent is the source reliable? Do you think the source is reliable? Explain why you think the source is reliable. Explain why you think the source is unreliable. So you can see the word reliable will always be in the question. When you see this word, then you know that you are dealing with a level three reliability question and you need to look at the context of the source to answer the question. Okay, so let's look at an example. The question in front of you reads as follows. To what extent would this source be considered reliable to a historian researching the Marshall Plan? Now, when we look at this question, which part of the question tells us that this is a level three reliability question? If you said the word reliable, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we know that this is a level three reliability question, we have to answer it. But first we need to know what the question is asking us to do. So let's read the question again. To what extent is this source reliable to a historian researching the Marshall Plan? What do you think this question is asking you to do? It's asking us to evaluate the extent of the source's reliability. So we can either choose to argue that the source is reliable to a greater extent, or we can choose to argue that the source is reliable to a lesser extent. So now that we know that we must evaluate its reliability, are we finally ready to answer the question? No, 
because we first need to look at the mark allocation. Okay, so I know that this might sound silly, but taking notes of the mark allocation is actually very, very, very important. And the reason is because so many times students throw away unnecessary marks because they don't actually check the mark allocation. And the mark allocation is very important because it actually tells you how many facts you need to include in your answer. So in front of you, we see an example of what a mark allocation in your NSE examination will actually look like. So you can see that the example says one times two equals two. And when we look at those numbers, it is important for us to understand what each number actually means. That is gonna then help us to understand how much we need to write. Now the first number, the number one that you see in front of you, that is the most important number for you as the candidate writing the examination, because that number tells you how many facts you have to write. So you can see that that number says one, which means that if this is your mark allocation, you will only need to write one fact. The second number that you see, which is a two, that number tells you how many marks you will get for each fact that you give. So in this case, because it is a two, it means that when you give your one fact as an answer, you are going to get two marks for it. And then the last mark, that just indicates the total amount of marks that you will receive for this question. And you can see that it is two marks. Because for one fact, if you are going to receive two marks for it, your total will be two marks. Now back to our level three reliability question. If we look at the mark allocation, then how many facts do we need to include in our answer? If you said two, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says two times two. Now we are finally ready to give our answer. But before we do this, we must first read the context of the source. That is the bit of information that is given with the source. So let's read the context together. The context says, this is a French cartoon entitled The American Wall and was published on the 4th of October 1947. It depicts the implementation of the Marshall Plan. Now when we look at that context, what does that context actually tell us about the origins of the source? Well, it tells us that the source was actually created during the time of the Marshall Plan. How do we know that? Because it gives us a date when it was published, 1947. That was during the time of the Cold War, and that was round about the time that the Marshall Plan was created. So this, in other words, is going to be a primary source. And remember, we argued that a primary source can be considered reliable. Okay, now if this is a primary source, meaning it was created during the time, then the person who created it must have lived during that time also, which will then also make the source a first-hand account. And remember, we can argue that a first-hand account is a reliable source. But when we look at the source, then we see that this source is a French cartoon. And we know that France was allies with America. So in other words, they would be known as part of the West, which would be against communism, which then means that this source is giving a French perspective of the Marshall Plan. It's giving a one-sided view of the Marshall Plan. And if we actually look at the information in the cartoon, then we can see that it's actually giving a positive view of the Marshall Plan. 
And that then means that this source is biased. Why? Because it's only giving one perspective. And remember we said that a biased source is an unreliable source. This source can also be considered propaganda. It can be considered anti-communist propaganda or pro martial plan, pro-Western propaganda, because it is um, showing the martial plan in a positive way. So because of this, we can also then argue that this source is unreliable. So what I'm trying to make you understand here is that when we are dealing with a source like a cartoon, for example, and we are asked to what extent would the source be considered reliable, we can always argue for both sides. We can always find an argument that the source is reliable and that the source is unreliable. But the important thing is that when you write your answer down, you only choose one side to argue. Okay, so now that we have read the context of the source, we need to make our decision. Are we going to decide that it's going to be reliable to a greater extent, or are we going to start, decide that it's going to be reliable to a lesser extent? If we decide that the source is reliable to a greater extent, then this is what your answer should look like. First, you need to state what your argument is. So our argument is that the source is reliable to a greater extent. And you can see that I wrote over there, to a greater extent. That is very important. That is what the marker is looking for at the end of the year. So you must make sure that you give your argument. Once you've given your argument, then you have to give reasons for why you say to a greater extent. And remember, we have to explain fully why we say so. We can't just mention that it's a primary source. We must explain why we say so. So the words that we use is very important. So the first point that I make there is it's a primary source created in 1947 when the Marshall Plan was implemented in Europe. So you see that I put three things in my answer over there. I said that it was a primary source and I explained why I said so. I basically gave a definition for a primary source. It was created in 1947 and 1947 we know is when the Marshall Plan was created or was implemented. So in other words, I'm giving a date and I'm giving an event. Okay, so that's very important. Your answer must be fully explained. My second point is that it's a first-hand account. And again, I'm giving a reason for why I say so. And the reason is because the cartoonist lived during the time when the Marshall Plan was implemented. So again, I'm explaining what a first-hand account is, and I'm bringing it into context of the source that we're using. So ultimately, whenever you are arguing that a source is reliable, to a greater extent, then that is the argument that you're going to use. You're going to say that it's a primary source and explain why, and you're going to say that it's a first-hand account and explain why. On the other hand, if we decide that the source is reliable to a lesser extent, then our answer will look like this. Now again, you can see that I gave my arguments, I wrote my argument down to a lesser extent. And remember, that is very, very, very important for you to do. Then I explain why I say so. So my first argument is it's biased. Okay, so now I'm explaining the bias. I'm saying it's biased towards the Marshall Plan. And what that actually means is that the cartoon favors the Marshall Plan. Okay, my second point is that it is pro Marshall Plan propaganda. So my second point is that it's propaganda. 
I'm explaining what type of propaganda it is. It's pro martial plan propaganda. In other words, it favors the martial plan. Then the third point that I make is it only gives a positive perspective of the martial plan. OK, that's very sim similar to the first two, but you're writing it in a different way. And then the last one, it's pro Western French cartoon. It's a pro Western French cartoon. So in other words, that's also very similar as saying it's biased or it's propaganda. Um, but again, you're just saying it in a different way. So there you can see that I've got four different options. We only have to include two reasons in our answer. So you can choose any two of those four options to give in your answer. So now that we've completed the examples and you know how to identify and answer a level three reliability question, I'm going to ask you to practice to identify and answer it by yourself. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to download the attached activity and then you need to take a few minutes to complete it. While you are completing it, I want you to make sure that you follow the instructions of the activity very carefully. I want you to pause this video and complete the activity. Once the activity is completed, then I want you to unpause the video and we will mark the activity together. Hello, grade 12, and welcome back. Okay, so you were supposed to complete an activity for me. Now let's mark the activity together. You were given the following question. To what extent will this source be considered reliable to a historian researching the Cold War? Now, when we look at this question, what parts of the question must we highlight, which is going to tell us that this question is a level three reliability question? If you said the word reliable, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now we have identified this question as a level three reliability question. Are we ready to answer it? No, not yet, because remember, we first have to understand what the question is asking us to do. So I want to, you to take a few minutes. We're going to read the question again, and then I want you to decide what the question is asking us to do. To what extent will this source be considered reliable to a historian researching the Cold War? Okay, so this question is actually asking us to look at the extent of the source's reliability. So either we're gonna argue that the source is reliable to a greater extent, or we're gonna argue that it's reliable to a lesser extent. And remember, in order to argue this, we are going to be looking at the context of the source. Okay, so now that we know that this is a level three reliability question, and we know what the question is asking us to do, are we finally ready to answer this question? The answer is no. Why? Because we first have to look at the mark allocation. So I want you to look at the mark allocation of this question, and then I want you to tell me how many facts do you think we need to include in this answer? If you said two, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says two times two. Okay, so now we are finally ready to answer our question. But before we do it, we need to look at the context of the source. So let's read the context of the source together. So the context of the source reads as follows. In October 1946, at the Paris Peace Conference, the Soviet Foreign Minister Molotov gave the Soviet view of the USA's aim in Eastern Europe. Now, when we read that context, what does it tell us about the source? 
Well, the first thing that it tells us is that we are looking at a speech. It doesn't necessarily say that it's a speech, but when we read the context, then we understand that what we are looking at is a speech. Now, a speech is spoken by a person in real time. And we can see that this speech was spoken by someone in 1946 at a conference. OK, so that means that this speech is a primary source. Why? Because it tells us that it was spoken in 1946, which was the time of the Cold War. Then we need to take a look at whose speech this was. OK, now Molotov was the Soviet foreign minister. So what that actually means is that when we take a look at his speech, he's going to give it from a Soviet perspective. OK, why? Because he is a Soviet minister. Therefore, when he's talking about America's aim in Europe or in Eastern Europe, it's going to be in a negative way. Why? Because the Soviet Union are enemies with America. And in that sense, we need to understand that that is going to possibly make the source unreliable. OK, so now that we've taken a look at the context of the source, let's take a look at what our answer should look like. OK, so remember, the question is, to what extent will the source be considered reliable? So that means that we can choose. We can either argue to a greater extent or we can argue to a lesser extent. If we argue to a greater extent, then this is what our answer should look like. So first of all, remember, we have to write down what our argument is and our argument is to a greater extent. So we have to write that down and you can see that I did that in my answer. Then we have to explain why we say so. And we have to give two explanations. Why? Because the mark allocation is two times two. So we can see that the first explanation would be that it is a primary source. And the second explanation would be that it is a first hand account. Because remember, that is always the go to arguments when you are dealing with a source that is reliable to a greater extent. But remember, you cannot just write primary source and first hand account. You have to give a full explanation as to why you say that. So if we say that the source is a primary source, we have to include why. And the why is because it was created in 1946 during the time of the Cold War. OK, so in other words, it is telling us that it is a speech from 1946 and therefore that makes it a primary primary source because it was said in 1946, which is during the time of the Cold War. The second point, it's a first hand account. Now, Molotov, who is the Soviet minister, is the person who is making the speech at that time during the Cold War. And that will therefore make it a first hand account. Why? Because he was there. He experienced it. He was the actual person who was making the speech. On the other hand, if we're going to argue that the source is reliable to a lesser extent, then this is what our answer is going to look like. So again, you can see that I wrote down the argument to a lesser extent, and then I gave my reasons and my reasons are fully explained. So the first reason is the biased reason, the fact that the source is biased, but I'm explaining what the bias is. So the bias is the fact that Molotov is a Soviet foreign minister during the Cold War. So the information in his speech is going to be biased. It's going to be one sided towards the Soviet Union. The second point that I've made is that it is propaganda. OK, but what type of propaganda is it? It's going to be anti Western propaganda. Why? Because he is a Soviet foreign minister. 
and the Soviets are against the West, they're against America. So therefore, whatever he says is going to be anti-Western, anti-American. And then the third point that I make is that Molotov, who is a Soviet minister, is only portraying the West in a negative light, not a positive light. Why? Because he's a Soviet minister and the West, America, is his enemy. So he's only going to portray the West in a negative light. Now, the important thing to remember when you are arguing the, the extent of the reliability is that even though you can argue that it is reliable to a greater extent or that it is reliable to a lesser extent, you have to only pick one side to argue in your NSC examination. The marker is not going to give you or award you your full marks if you give one reason for saying that it is reliable to a greater extent and one reason for saying that it's reliable to a lesser extent. If you pick a side, you have to argue only that one side that you pick. You may not argue both sides simultaneously. Okay, so let's recap what you've learned. Step one, you must look for the words to identify the question as a level three reliability question. Do you remember what these words were? To what extent is the source reliable? Do you think the source is reliable? Explain why you think the source is reliable and explain why you think the source is unreliable. So remember that word reliable is always going to be in the question and when you see it, then you must know that you must evaluate its reliability. Step two, you have to read the question carefully so that you know what the question is asking you to do. Then step three, you have to look at the mark allocation so that you know how many facts you must include in your answer. And I can tell you now that a level three reliability question is always going to be two times two. Then step four, you must ask yourself the following questions. When was the source created? Who created the source? And why the source was created? And then lastly, you're going to analyze the reliability based on your responses. Grade 12, this is the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for your patience and participation. I really hope that I got to teach you something in this lesson today. And remember to continue to practice because practice makes perfect. I hope that you guys all have a lovely day further.